Hi my angels and devils and all who may wander here. It is Amanda Christina and I am still playing catch up with Spooktober. I think this is going to be day 25 or 26 so I am getting there. Now all I have done is taken something big and round, traced around it. This is a piece of not too thin but a fairly decent weight chipboard. This is an A4 piece I got from a We Are Memory Keepers um, album insert thing. So I've been keeping those to use and I have quite a few of those because they're part of my storage solutions and we'll get to that. So I've just cut out this big, big circle. Now what I'm going to do is just roughly find, oh, I was trying to bend it without being too, is to find a sort of centre. Now what I'm going to do is put a cut to approximately the centre and I think I may have screwed this piece up a bit. Um, what we basically are creating, luckily cardstock can be reformed a little and I think what we're doing is, let me just, is we're making a Harry Potter hat. Let me, a Harry Potter wizard's hat. Let me just see on me. Hmm. I think what I'll do is use that as the inner piece because that has not been as damaged. And let me have a look. I'm just trying to make sure that if I do it, it will fit on my head nicely. So I have the piece. Now we're going to cut this, basically this big piece here out of the hat. We don't need that. Now you could just cut this in half and do this as well. So that is another option. I'm just getting rid of the little icky bits. So now I am just, oh, we put that bit under because I accidentally mangled, oh, maybe if I do it the opposite way it might be so bad. I'm just going to make sure that the mangle-ish piece goes towards the back. So that is the shape we want. Now what I'm also going to do is cut a little more of the cardstock away because we no longer need that. So I'm just going to cut a bit more away. Now, as I said, you could probably just cut this in half and do it, but I'm just, yeah, okay. So again, that is what we have. Now it looks like a party hat. I understand that. Um, we have a comb that I'm going to attach to the inside so you can put it on. So now we've got our shape. It's just a little less than, a little more than half. We have some, this is just panne velvet, which is nice and cheap. I mean, if you've got a piece of velvet, if you've got something else you'd like to use, go for it. I'm just using what I have that's cheap. Um, and I had a big piece of this left over from when I used to do craft shows and used to use this as a backdrop. So now what I'm doing is I am just literally going to <laughs> make sure this isn't too, you want it bigger than your piece, like you really want it bigger than your piece, but you also don't want to overdo how much excess you have around. So this is quite an economical way to make a Harry Potter hat. Okay. Probably not the smartest way to have done that now that it's rolling up on me, but ah well. So we have some craft glue. Now the first thing I'm going to tell you is that you are going to, I'm going to tape this, the ends of this to make sure it sticks um, because one side of this we're not actually going to, what's the word, one side of this we're not actually going to glue down yet. And I'll explain that to you when we get to that step. Okay, so we're just going to use a piece here. Now I'm not going to use a lot of tape because the tape will show through and we don't want the tape showing through and marring the look of your beautiful Harry Potter hat. This is, um, like this piece of chipboard's being recycled from packaging. Um, you could go a little thinner, but the thing is if you want something that lasts a long time, and I made these with my niece one year, actually the year the final book came out, and we wore them. I don't know what happened to mine. It is, it has vanished. But um, I can tell you that they're actually 
it's actually a pretty good thing to have in your stash. Now, what I'm going to do, can you see the tape? Is the tape showing? No, the tape's not showing through. However, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do it the way I normally would to get the round. I'm just going to literally just be very gentle on the edge of this. Now, here's the thing. If you want to make this fancy, there are so many fabrics and other things you can use to make a fancier witch's hat. What I am going, or a fancier wizard's hat, I should say, although the witches wear them in Harry Potter too. Um, this is the school uniform hat, I guess. Um, basically, you could use a fancier fabric. You could do layers of fabric. You could add embellishments. But I am just simply going for the plain and simple school cap because why not? And when you see how easy this is, you will be able to make these for anyone that you want to. Um, and you could even, if you wanted to, add a band of ribbon that is the house colours. Okay, so we're just going to gently pull this off. Now, I'm doing this because it's going to make it easier for me overall. If you wanted to, you could just use some clips and clip it down rather than doing this. Um, it really just depends on what resources you have. I didn't bring many clips out here at the moment. I think I have a couple. I hope I have a couple because I'm I was sure I had bought a couple of silver clips out to hold this together when it was finished. And it looks like I've misplaced them, of course. Because that is the theme of this week. Amanda's losing her mind. Okay, so what you want to do is just gently kind of pull it. And it's okay because this is fabric, it will come off that. So if you haven't got it down tight enough, it's okay to sort of come back and tighten it. You kind of just really want this stretched out and tight. And the reason being that you don't want your fabric to... Yeah, you don't want lumps in your fabric, basically. That's the whole point. You just don't want any lumps. So you've got this nice kind of everything stuck in place now which means you can do a little trimming of your fabric so what we're going to do is we're going to trim in here and cut here take a bit of a bigger section here off and we're just going to trim around sorry I just realized I wasn't even on camera then oh my goodness I'm so bad at that I'm so sorry guys I am so not used to this new setup I'm so bad at remembering that I'm on camera and that you guys need to see what I am actually doing um, I'm in my own little crafty world I guess a lot of the time I don't mean to be but that is just me I'm I live alone I spend a lot of time in my own little world um, so sometimes I forget that I need to okay so now we have craft glue and what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the craft glue run some along here for our first bit and just pull this over and glue it down and hold it in place you could use tape if you wanted to like I'm I'm using the craft glue because it's just what I have and it's what I wanted for the inside and just smearing that out. And then what we're going to do is first we're just going to take this little extra bit and snip that little piece off. Don't snip the bit underneath it, otherwise you'll have a gap, although you can hide it underneath the thing. Now this is what I learnt in Cottage Crafts. So I am just going to mitre that corner a little going to take that little bit of corner off okay so now what you're going to do to get to get this around your edges is you're going to go around and snip every so often until you get all the way around now I did not cut this out on camera like the circle out on camera because I was sitting here having issues with my laptop and thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and cut that out now. It'll just be easier. So, and also, because now we're at 10 minutes, I know this is curled up, but I'm just going to cut through the curls 
for now and pull them out as I glue them down. Now what this gives you is it will automatically give you a really, see, now I cut in just a little bit more than I should have there but that's okay, we'll make it work and there's enough to fold over. You just want to make sure you've got enough to fold over in a sort of semi-generous way. Um, okay. We're almost all the way around. And what you do, why you do this is, as I said, it gives you a really nice curve. I like this when I did cottage craft. I have noticed that a few of the ladies share things and are like, oh, I wonder how they did that. And I'm like, oh, I actually know how to do that because I actually got dragged as a teenager with my mother to do cottage craft because she thought it would be a good mother-daughter bonding exercise and a good way to bribe me to behave. Um, I was about 13 at the time. And a lot of those things that I learnt in that, I still use to this day in a lot of other crafting. Okay, so I'm just going to put some glue down. It's a bit hot here at the moment, so I'm not going to put it all down. Um, and then what you do is you just gently work all these pieces around. And so you're just going to fold them up, pull them as far as you can, I mean, if you wanted to leave a bit of a lip so that you can sew on your comb, you could. I probably won't sew my comb on. I will probably end up um, just gluing it on just because it's easier. Um, this is messy. <laughs> I'm just getting messy tonight. But it's the last tutorial I'm filming for the night, so that's okay. And then I have to go check my list and see what I have on tomorrow, even though it's going to be 31 degrees. Oh, my God off me. Ugh. Everything is sticking together. I just tried to wipe my glue up and I just got, yeah, okay, I should have used paper towel for that. That would have been smart. But I'm not thinking at 11.30 at night. Um, okay. So now we're just going to glue the last half of this down. And what you want to do with any that are curled up is just gently uncurl them if you can. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not going to matter too much, but I'm a bit of a, hey, I just want you to uncurl, please. Um, now, the thing is, if you don't get your base quite perfect, here's another thing. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. If you don't get your base quite perfect, it's not tragic because your hair will hide a certain amount of the imperfections. Um, and again, and it's one of those things where at the back, if you want to hide your join, you just need some nice trim or a piece of ribbon um, to go over the back, just the, the back seam. Um, if you want to decorate it, there's a photo of a witch's hat I decorated on my, oh no, there isn't yet. I haven't put it up yet. I didn't get to share it in my project shares because it had already been posted when I did my project shares and I could not, there was something else I was going to share with you too, but I couldn't because it was already on its way to its new home. Okay, so that is what we have. Now, the reason I say not to, the reason I say not to glue that piece in is that when you're doing this, when you're making your hat, now, bear in mind, it is a sort of high, so you sort of want it like that. Yep. So you want it to fit the back of your head but sort of comfortably, but you still want it to have a sort of high point, just like the ones in Harry Potter do. Um, let me see if I can find the clip that I had over here earlier. I swear I today has been a comedy of errors. This week, this week has been such a comedy of errors. Okay, here we go. I have some clips. So what I'm going to do is just very gently clip this to where I want it to be. Now we are going to put glue in these spots, but the first spot we're going to put glue is all down that extra piece of fabric. So we're going to glue that extra piece of fabric and you want to be generous with your glue here. You don't want to scrimp. Um, you really don't want to scrimp on the glue here. You're going to glue that extra piece of fabric over onto the other side of your hat, which helps create a join. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is pop that there. Then we're going to roll this back. We know we need glue all over this, so we're going to be generous with the glue because the only place you don't want to be super generous with the glue is right along this edge because you don't want it seeping out. So we're just going to literally glob glue all over here. Roll this around into the shape you want. And I've just got a, a, a large clip, a large alligator clip that I'm going to hold it down with. And you've made a Harry Potter hat. It's that easy. Like it really is. Look, it looks like one of the hats from the movies. Um, excuse me while I blow my nose. Sorry about this. Okay, so you've got a hat that looks like a hat from the movies. But how do you wear it? Well, it's up to you. I mean, you could just put some bobby pins in it if you wanted to leave little. You could sew some little hooks around it. Or what I am probably going to do is try and attach this with some needle and thread. But I just want to make sure it's glued into place properly first. Make sure you, ho you, make sure you hold it down as well as you can. Um... As you can see, this is gluing really nicely. Um, you may not get quite as, it depends on how you do your fabric. You know, you may want to work on your little point. Um, you could decorate this. You could add a brim if you wanted to do a witch's witch's hat. Um, I was going to do a tutorial for that. I may still do that in the next couple of days. I will see how I am going. Oh, I just noticed my little talisman Ursula is missing. Okay. Ugh. So. What I'm going to do is grab a needle and some black cotton, if my fingers will behave with me. Okay, I'm just going to stick my needle between. Oh, look, I have, I have a needle, but it doesn't have enough black cotton on it. Okay, so what I'm going to attempt to do is sew down this... Um, comb so that it can just be it can just be popped in with the comb you could just like what I what you could do is maybe just put a little flap of cardstock and then glue your um comb to the flap of cardstock or a flap of fabric um and then wrap the fabric around um you could glue in some ribbons and tie or or, or staple some ribbons and tie it around underneath your hair okay why is it I can thread a needle okay most times and then I have to do it on camera and I can't for the life of me thread a needle right now? Ugh. Okay. Nope. Okay. Where's the one that had was already threaded? Because at least I know I can get the thread in that. Um, so I'm trying to not have these tutorials be super long things. Um, this is a really good cosplay kind of thing too. Like it would be so cool, you know, also kids party. If you're having a kids party and you wanted them to have Harry Potter costumes, this is a really cool one to do. It doesn't cost a lot of money either. Um, I think we get hung up on things having to cost a, a lot. I started to get it in. Yes. Oh, not quite. Damn it. Okay. I am determined to do this now because I just want to get these done and I want Spooktober to finish with some really nice, awesome tutorials and things and I just have had the Comedy of Errors week. And when I say Comedy of Errors week, it's been a doozy. It really has. Um, I'm hoping that it will just fade into oblivion as a new day approaches and a new week. Um, yeah, new weeks are good. Okay, so I'm just wrapping that around my fingers to do the knot, pulling it through, and then I always just pull it down towards the end. Okay. So now this, this is craft glue, so it pretty much should be dry now. Um, So we've got we've got our nice wizard's hat. It looks like a wizard's hat. It looks like it's supposed to look. So now what I'm going to do is find a spot here just to come through gently. Where am I? Okay. 
So as you can see, if I do that, I can see where I'm going to be putting the comb. So we're going to start here somewhere. Pull this through. Now what I'm going to do just to make sure that this does not pull through, I am like the knot doesn't pull through, I'm just going to loop it and do that. And then I'm going to wrap it around the comb. Sorry, I just realized that, okay. So I've looped that, then I'm going to wrap it around the comb and come, pull it through and come through this end bit like that. And I'm probably going to do that three or four times for each comb loop. Um, yeah, that is how we want it to be. That is, oh, have I put this in the wrong spot? That, there we go. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that same step. So you take your needle. This is going to be a little hard at first, um, just because getting it in the right place, etc., um, is not always the easiest thing. We're going to come back, go through that same comb thing, and again, just go through here, pull it through, and then I'll move on to the next loop, I think. Um, or actually, I may do one more just to make sure it's really tight. Like if you wanted to do this and you had a darning needle, I would probably suggest using string or something, just or some embroidery cotton, just to really make sure it's going to be on tight. As I said, you could probably wing it and glue it. I'm a bit iffy on the winging it and gluing it thing, so I just want to make sure that this is in as tight as possible. Hang on, just make sure your cotton is not going in the wrong spots. Okay, there we go. Now, what are you, your excess? So we pull you through. Now, remember, I'm trying to get this through the top of the cotton. Then what we're going to do is go to the second one and repeat the process. Um, this is going to take a little minute. So I've just gone through the second loop Ugh, and I'm getting tangled in other loops. Hang on. I see what happened. We just need to pull you down and off. Just be, this is going to be, a, this is probably going to be the most time consuming part of this. So we're going to come up under, go through your fabric. If you can get through your um, cardstock, take a little bit of the cardstock with you. And then as you can see, that's starting to hold on really nicely. So again, under, through, and then we're going to come up onto the next section that we've, oh, sorry, the next section that we've got here. And we're just going to keep going until this, as I said, I miss the pause button. I miss it so much because of the fact that this is one of those things that I would have been able to pause and then come back to when it was finished. But we're just going to do that until it's, we've gotten a few pieces here and a few pieces there. And that way it can just slide in. And that's your Harry Potter hat. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, let me know what you thought. Let me know if I need, needed to show you how to do the sewing a bit better. I'm so sorry. Look, I'll do a little bit more just to show you. So we're going to come over. We're going to come over the third rung now. We're going to come up under the third rung into the cardstock if you can. And you're just going to push your needle through if my needle decides it wants to push you. There it is. And pull it. This just. Just be gentle as you're doing this. If it gets caught up somewhere, just be gentle. Don't stress it. Just untangle it and keep going. And what's going to end up happening is that I'm going to probably do four across here and then go to the other end and do the other four. And that way you'll have something really nice and well, okay, so around, up, through your velvet, and a little bit of your cardstock if you can. If not, just as long as you get through your velvet, you'll be fine. And pull. And see, that's becoming nice and tight in there. Um, you're going to have this 